Hello everyone, welcome to Come Sit at My Table. We are Tom and Melissa, and we're really glad you've joined us for this video. Today, we are going to make chicken and dumpling casserole. Now, I got this recipe in 2010 off of a website called solidgospel.com. It had been posted by a man named Greg Hutchins. Now, let me tell you that that recipe was a really good recipe. But over the years, I have tweaked it and changed it a little bit to meet our needs. We like it a little juicier, a little more gravy than what was in that original recipe. We like a little more of the dumpling mixture than what was in that recipe. So I've changed it a little bit over the years. But basically, it's that same recipe I got off the website in 2010. Let's talk about what you're going to need to make this recipe. First, you're going to need one stick of butter. And I will tell you that I have already taken a stick of butter and cut it into pats and put it in a 9 by 13 dish that I have put in the oven so the butter can melt. When that is melted, then we will use four cups of cooked diced chicken. And you can see that I have just diced it up into small bite-sized pieces. It's certainly not chopped or pulled. It's just small bite-sized pieces, and you need about four cups. I think I used, I think it was four chicken breasts, but they weren't huge. So four medium-sized chicken breasts or so, you want about four cups of chicken. You're also going to need one and a half cups of self-rising flour, and it does need to be self-rising so that it will rise up on its own. And you need one and a half cups of milk. Now I'm using whole milk, but you can certainly use skim milk or 2% or whatever you prefer. Then you're going to need two 14, 14 and a half ounce cans of chicken broth. If you prefer to use low sodium, then by all means, use the low sodium broth. I know lots of us are having to watch our sodium. My father was a heart patient and we always cooked with low sodium ingredients when he was eating with us. So if you need to use low sodium or sodium free, then by all means use that. Then you're going to need two cans of cream of chicken soup. And again, if you want to use the heart healthy soup, then please, by all means, do that. I don't think it will change anything about this recipe if you do that. So you use whatever's best for you and your family. Now, the reason that we really like this recipe is that it's very simple to put together. Once you get your chicken cooked and chopped, then it's very easy to do the rest of it. You're just making layers. You're really not having to stir all the ingredients together. You'll see what I mean. Also, let me mention that if you want to use a rotisserie chicken and use white and dark meat, that works really well in this recipe. It just happened that I had some chicken breast in the freezer, so I'm using all chicken breast today, but a rotisserie chicken works really well. Let me grab some kitchen mitts and we'll see if our butter has melted. Actually, it just has melted. And we will remove this from the oven. Now, I'm going to make a place here to put this so that Melissa can video what we're doing. And I will just take that pan and put it right here on these pads. And then you can see what's going on here. Once your butter is melted in the pan, all you have to do with your chicken is just layer it on top. And you just want to kind of spread that out a little bit. Um, really four cups of chicken is plenty. If you don't have four, quite four cups, that's still gonna be enough chicken. You just want a single layer of chicken in the bottom of your pan right on top of that batter. Our next layer is going, I'm gonna scoot this down just a little bit, Melissa. Our next layer that we're going to put in is our flour and milk. So we're just going to 
Put our flour, this is self-rising again, with that and our milk, cup and a half of each. Cup and a half of self-rising flour, cup and a half of milk. And we're just going to stir that together, whisk that together. Now you do want to make sure that is mixed well. You don't want a lot of lumps in this. You, um, you want it to be pretty smooth. So we're just going to whisk that. I think whisking does help. Um, it, it just helps break up those lumps more than using a spoon. So if you've got a whisk, use it. If not, a spoon will work just fine. Now, all we're going to do is just pour that right on top of the chicken. Just drizzle it over. I like to go around the outside edge first just to make sure I have a good border of it. And then just across the middle. And we're just going right on top of that chicken and butter. Just making a nice layer. We're not going to stir this. We're just putting it right on top. I'm going to grab a spatula and scrape that out because we want all that. This is going to be our dumpling mix. So when we say it's a chicken and dumpling casserole, this is what's going to make the dumplings. And no, it's not traditional chicken and dumplings. It's not like what your grandmother made when you were a kid and she made homemade chicken and dumplings. But guess what? This is a whole lot easier than what she did. All right, so we're going to leave that. No stirring, just make a layer right on top. Now here's another reason that I love this recipe. We're going to use this same bowl. We don't have to clean it. We don't have to wash it out. We're just going to pour that right in and use the same bowl that we used for the dumpling mix to make our gravy for our casserole. So our two cans of cream of chicken soup go in. And you know, if you've watched our videos, I'm gonna get it all. Cause I don't like to waste anything. I'm all about using it all. And then goes the second can. And then we will do the same thing. We will whisk it until it's really smooth. So let's get this off, same whisk. We don't have to clean it. We're just gonna use the same one and whisk that up a little bit. We just wanna get those lumps, that soup, we wanna break it up and get it pretty smooth. Um, you don't want a lot of lumps in this. It won't hurt if there's a few lumps, but just break it up the best you can. Whisk it up a time or two. And then guess what we're going to do with this? Yep. We're going to pour it right on top of our dumpling mix. Now, one little trick I have learned is to take a spoon and turn it upside down to pour my gravy on. And that way it won't mix into, oop, I'm starting to spill a little bit. Let me tilt it that way. It won't mix into the dumpling mix quite so bad. You wanna keep that dumpling mix in a layer if you can. Now, I may not use all of this because I certainly don't want it to run over, but I want plenty of gravy in this. I'm gonna use most of it. I know somebody in this house that likes most of her dishes, pasta dishes and everything to be really saucy. Who would that be? I think you're probably talking about me since I'm the only <laughs> other person living here now. <laughs> okay, let me grab a paper towel. Now, I did not use all of that soup mix. I guess I could and put it all in there and see what happens. I have done it before and it has run over. So I think I'm just gonna leave most of this in here or a little bit of this in here because I don't want it to run over today. Okay, so our oven is preheated to 375 degrees. What will happen is that as this bakes, 
that uh, dumpling layer is kind of going to puff up and rise and a lot of it will come to the top. Some of this soup mixture, the gravy mixture, is kind of going to sink to the bottom around that chicken. Some of the gravy will stay up on top. You'll notice when we take it out that it, it's a little juicy. So we, we will see some of it on top, but some of it will also be in the bottom. But we'll notice that a lot of that dumpling layer has risen to the top and you'll see patches of that dough on top. We are going to bake it in a 375 degree oven for 35 minutes and we'll check it. If you look at your casserole and it's dry, you've overbaked it. You do not want this to be dry. You want it to be wet. You want it to look like there's some gravy patches on top of it because when you scoop it out, you want gravy in there to put on your chicken and dumplings. So don't, don't over bake it. Don't look at it and say, oh, it's still wet on top. I need to keep baking it. 35 minutes is about right. So make sure you don't bake it too long. All right, let's go into the oven for 35 minutes. And when this is finished baking, we will come back and let you see what it should look like. In we go. I do want to tell you that after I put the casserole in the oven and got it on the shelf, I looked at it and decided that it could use the rest of that gravy. So I did pour the rest of it into the casserole dish. So make sure you use the whole thing. It did just fine. Let's check to see if it's ready to come out. Oh yes. All right, let's carefully move this. All right, there is our chicken and dumpling casserole. Now you can see that there's still quite a bit of the gravy up here on top of it. You can see that. But you can also see where the dumpling part has come to the top. So that's where we're going to get the dumpling taste. And there's quite a bit of that. There, there will also be some down under that gravy part. And there's quite a bit here around the edges. So, I can't take a bite of this yet. <laughs> it would scorch my mouth and probably take the hide off my tongue. So we're going to have to let it sit for just a little while, let it cool down some, and then we will come back and taste the chicken and dumpling casserole. But before we leave this segment, let me ask you to do us a favor and go right below this video and click the thumbs up for us. That just says you liked it. And if you haven't already, would you please click the subscribe button and the little notification bell beside of it that just helps us build our channel. And of course, we always appreciate when you hit the share button and share our video to your own social media. One other thing, let me remind you that in all of our videos, Melissa always puts the written recipe under the video in the description box. You'll see a little box right under the video that has the title of the recipe. If you click in that box, it will expand. And when that box expands, you will see the written recipe. She always does that for every one of our videos so that you can have it written down if you want it and not have to write it as we go through. All right, let's let this cool for just a minute. And when it's cool enough for me to take a bite, we'll come right back and let you see what it looks like dished out into a bowl. The chicken and dumpling casserole has cooled for a few minutes. I hope it has cooled enough that I don't burn my mouth. But I want you to look at how rich and juicy that is with that gravy over the chicken and dumplings. Doesn't that look delicious? Now, we all know this is not the chicken and dumplings that your grandmother made or mine but it does taste like chicken and dumplings. And it's really good. 
And I better not take a huge bite because it may really burn me. Here we go. While I'm waiting for this to cool, I would like to say that I do appreciate that Greg Hetchens posted this on solidgospel.com 13 years ago. Our family has certainly enjoyed it over that 13 years. Our kids loved it when they were home, and Melissa and I still enjoy it. So I do appreciate that he shared that. Oh, my. Wow. Just in case you think this is not really like chicken and dumplings, I want you to look at this. Look at that dumpling. That's what it is. That is a dumpling. This is a true chicken and dumpling casserole. Man, that's delicious. All right. Thank you again for watching our videos. Thank you for the nice comments. Melissa really works hard trying to comment back to each person takes her a long time to do that, but she's worked hard at it. And we really do appreciate all the kind comments that we've gotten. But most of all, we want you to remember that you are always welcome to come sit at my table. Have a great day.